Um, good afternoon, everybody. Hope everybody enjoyed their lunch. Um, I'd like to talk about non-destructive testing, but uh, before I get into some of the specific applications, I'll run through a little bit about the company and some of the other applications that don't fall under that banner. Um, some of you will know this well, maybe others don't know us at all. Um, we are TerraView Limited and spun out of uh, Toshiba's Cambridge Research Institute in 2001. Uh, we're based in Cambridge and uh, are dedicated to the development and application of uh, terahertz. We have some 20 PhD scientists, chemists and physicists and uh, as was mentioned by one of the previous uh, speakers, a very extensive patent portfolio in this area. Um, I apologise for this slide. Uh, <laughs> But uh, I do commit to retiring this slide at the end of the presentation, so I'm committing to never show this, uh, this slide again. I'm not sure if unexploited is the right word anyway, judging by the number of people that we have here and the number of applications that there are already in the field. So I think we need to find a different way of describing it. Uh, and people have shown this already, so I'll skip through that. So before I get on to... Um, talk about the particular NDT, non-destructive test applications, I thought I would just show one or two slides on uh, some of the other applications and some of the products that we at uh, TerraView have. Um, we may be best known for the work that we've done with the pharmaceutical industry, mostly on solid, solid dosage forms, uh, tablets and capsules in particular. Uh, where we have a couple of products really quite dedicated to that, and you'll see a picture of those as we, as we go through. Um, I've had a couple of people ask me over lunch about the cancer applications of terahertz, and actually I gave a talk on uh, the cancer applications last year, so decided I would talk uh, only extremely briefly about that this year. Um, as with all of the applications that I'm mentioning, I can't go into any of them in detail, so if you have an interest in one of them in particular, please come and see me or uh, my colleagues uh, during the breaks. So the, the cancer detection area that we're working on in particular at the moment is in intraoperative uh, breast cancer detection, and I can say more, more about that if you're interested after the talk. Uh, we're also involved in uh, some um, uh, defense, and security type applications in, in explosives and threat materials, electronics and also some other applications such as dental that David Churchley will be talking about immediately after myself. In terms of the products, we developed over the last few years a range of products both in terms of spectroscopy which is the system you see on the left hand side and also in imaging and in imaging we've got two main workhorses. The one that I'm showing here is, is very much uh, pharmaceutical specific, where um, the, the, uh, the box on the left hand side is generating the terahertz and the box on the right hand side is manipulating a solid dosage form, in this case a, a tablet, to present it to the terahertz source. Um, one of the real workhorses that we have is this platform which we refer to as the Image of 1000. Um, this has been used for a very wide range of uh, applications, including some of the NDT applications that I'll show in a moment. Um, samples such as teeth, other types of tissue, uh, airplane composites, car paint materials, and also pharma samples have all been uh, imaged with this device. Um, in addition to the standard set of products, we have a wide range of projects that we've undertaken, uh, the, the common theme being here uh, the remote launch of, uh, of terahertz. So in this case, for example, this is the intraoperative breast probe. So it's, it's a handheld device. So the terahertz is created and measured on the handheld device remote from the core unit. And, and other examples in uh, explosives detection, for example. So looking at the, um, the examples within NDT, or non-destructive evaluation, whatever we want to call it, uh, I've just picked out a few examples, and the common theme among all of these 
is uh, that these are all real world cases. So these are all cases where um, a customer has come to us with a problem that they did not have a solution to or, or, and or did not understand fully with conventional techniques. And they asked us to take a look at whether we could um, image um, the, the particular issue in, in question. So here we're looking at um, a car panel with several layers of undercoat and paint and we're, we're illustrating here uh, a defect that was found uh, in one of the deep layers in this, in this material. And with a little bit of luck, um, we may actually get, perhaps not. Yeah, I'm trying to do that. There we go. Um, There's just a 3D representation of the different layers. And so we've got a 3D representation all the way through the layers. And here, just coming round, you can see uh, the defect in actually two, two of the layers. Um, moving on to composite materials, and this particular one was from the aerospace industry. Again, the, the question here was, could we see, could we use terahertz to image and detect any issues that were buried in some of the inner layers? So here we're seeing um, peaks and troughs corresponding to the the uh, interfaces between the various layers uh, in, in this material. And sorry, the goal was to determine uh, the thickness and uniformity of the, of the layers. So here in this sample, we, we're illustrating here the layer thickness that we've measured. And in fact, in this, in this particular sample, we can see a fairly uniform uh, layer thickness. However, as we move on to here, we can see in one of the deeper layers a possible uh, defect in that layer. So we can see a, a non-uniformity in that layer, which is um, some millimeter, millimeter and a half into the sample. So again, in this one, we're investigating the integrity of the different interfaces, polyester to epoxy and epoxy to carbon. And you can see the interfaces here quite clearly. Uh, represented by the peaks and the troughs in this, uh, in this plot. Um, so here um, we can see again uh, in this sample, which was rather more complicated, the, the goal was whether we could see an internal uh, wire mesh. And that wire mesh is used for uh, light, lightning conduction. And so the question was, could we actually image that? Uh, so you see a, a series here where we're beginning to pick up as we work through the sample, we're beginning to see the edges of the mesh. And so you can see here quite clearly that we're picking that up as we go into the sample. Um, and I don't know if you can see it, but there is, there's a grid here, it's perhaps not, not that clear, where we can see the actual edges of the mesh itself as we're looking into the different layers of the sample. Um, another uh, example of non-destructive test is in LCD or flat panel display um, material. So here the question was could we see uh, defects and water ingression in the material and you can actually see that quite clearly in the display that we're showing here. So we can see uh, both water ingression and other contaminants that are uh, that are clearly uh, identifiable under terahertz. Uh, before I get into a semiconductor example, my final example here is uh, a rapid prototyping <coughs> sample where uh, here we can see a, a couple of uh, defects. These are voids in the sample. So again, we're, we're able to see all the way through into that and we can see some problems with the manufacturing of the sample. Um, the final example that I want to get into is something that, uh, this is very current work on time domain reflectometry. Um, and this is work um, that connects with uh, the Terra Nova project that uh, Martin and others mentioned earlier. So some of this work has been done under that project. Um, TDR, uh, I was surprised to find, has been around uh, rather longer than I thought. It's been around since at least the 1960s. Uh, I think uh, Hewlett-Packard 
uh, were involved, among others, at, at that stage. But it's, it's now in, it's in routine use within the semiconductor uh, industry for uh, fault analysis and uh, QA of packages. Uh, so the idea is to, to uh, use that technology to identify faults in semiconductor packaging. Uh, if I can call it conventional TDR, it has a resolution of about 200 microns, and there is a, a, a need, a pressing need within the industry uh, to improve upon that resolution. Uh, and uh, we were very fortunate that some of the industry leaders have come to us and asked us whether we could apply terahertz to improving that resolution. So the business drivers here were, well, basically the complexity of the packages is, uh, is ever increasing, and they themselves have determined a, a need to improve that resolution uh, beyond 2010 uh, and uh, have a desire to deploy this within their industry. So uh, this is a schematic of the system that was developed during the Terra Nova project. And basically our, our uh, system finishes here and then we use a conventional high frequency probe to uh, probe the, the device under test. Um, I can't say too much about the results because some of them are uh, confidential to a particular customer. But uh, here what we demonstrate is as we move uh, the probe in 10 micron intervals along the sample, we can quite si clearly see the, the peak uh, signal moving and we're able to distinguish between each one of those peaks. So what we're showing here is the ability to resolve the positions of the faults within that package to somewhere of the order of 10 microns. So uh, an order of magnitude improvement over what's achievable within the industry now. So our intention beyond this is to deploy this uh, with, with, uh, with a particular customer and then expand this out across the semiconductor industry. Um, so what I wanted to say uh, in conclusion was what I've, I've tried to do is show a range of applications related to non-destructive test across a, a series of industries. Um, I think overall there's an increasing awareness in the industry and acceptance of what terahertz can offer. That last example that I showed, here we had an industry leader who came to us and said, we know about terahertz, we believe it can do this for us, could you develop a system to do that? And certainly in, in the time I've been involved in that, that is a marked shift over the last few years from, from where we were previously, where we were continuously having to educate people about what, you know, the fundamental physics of what was going on in terahertz. So I think that that has changed a, a great deal. Um, so, so for many customers, it's no longer a question of the fundamentals of the science. It's more a question of what can it do for me? Um, so I've scratched the surface on, um, on many of those applications. Myself and my two colleagues were here. We have a, a booth in the back. Um, if you have interest in any one of those areas, or indeed some of the ones that I hardly mentioned at the beginning, uh, please come and uh, talk to us. And finally, I'd like just to acknowledge uh, our Terra Nova project. Uh, part of the, the work that I've shown here has been funded under that project. Thanks very much.